Association of Commissioners at IBC be people that will be handled with integrity that it deserves. And their voice will not be shut down because as commissioners, we were there in the kitchen. We know what happened. Some of these things need to be spoken in a safe space. Commissioners passed an every generational commission and even to make it wider, the constitutional commissions that are there, they have something to give back to our country. Having commissioners and chasing them away, we lose a lot of the investment that the country puts on them. We only wish that we can have a safe space to talk about these things. Recording in progress. So that any other commissioner that is employed at IBC will not be there just because of the salary, but will be there to ensure that things are done right and integrity is preserved. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cherera. Commissioner Masit. Oh, she disappeared again. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Masit. Is she the one in steps? She, is. she muted again. Text her if she's up. Okay. Um, hello? Can, can, we, can we ask you a question mm -hmm. before you disappear? Maybe you hear Commissioner Masit. Masit is back. Yeah. Can you hear me, please? We can hear you now, We can Masit. hear you, Masit. You can hear me. We can hear you. If you don't mind, if you can put touch yeah, your video you. icon. Thank you so much. Yes, it's the wind where I am. Um, thank you, bipartisan committee. Thank you, all members, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I want to just say a few words uh, because, as you know, I still have a case in court. I have appealed at the Human Rights and Constitutional Court and my removal. And some things are being canvassed in court. But I want to say in brief. What was done in four months was not verification and telling of elections. When we were announcing all of us, what we were announcing were unwritten summaries, which were to be taken, to be typed, and to be brought back for commission. And each commissioner to check what they had written and what they had been typed if it is in order. It went one way. Two. Um, two. When the results came, it came only three pages. And it was a summary in counties which exceeded 100%. That's where the dispute started from. How could we announce results which are over 100% and we have not been given contact for C or summaries we wrote from constituencies to confirm whether what we announced and what had been taken is the same? Up to today, we've never seen from, from 34C. Again, what happened in four months, we had not finished even announcing 27 constituencies. The screen was technically put up for Kenyans not to see what was going on. And when we asked, it became an issue. Informers were removed from our committees. I chair legal affairs committee. That's what I used to chair. But one week to election, chairman wrote us letters, putting me logistics, welfare, and security in Rwanda, putting Cherera at, um, at the communication center, Nyangaya protocol, to remove us from results and assign results to Collier and Marchand only, with letters written specifically which are part of the process which are in court. We were never open for, we were never told anything, and when we wanted to say it, they said we wanted to attend to the people. Yet, when the security team came, there were no results. There, were, there was nothing even we could even we could not even talk of results because at that time there were no results. If anything, they just said there was tension in the country and we, there was no screen showing and we are taking so long. We should we should uh, ascend to ease the tension in the country. So uh, up to now we don't know the results, and it's very important that we audit these results very very important because when we audit and uh, even made uh, open to everybody even those people who have been elected and who lost as mps and even others they know their results because i want to say 
This was not calling. It was not calling. There was no verification. It was just. Uh, it, it is not. I, I don't know what to say about it as a commission. It's a shame for our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Masit. Will uh, Cherera, please. We'll ask you to just stay online. We take a few yeah. questions. Yeah, I want to go first. Uh, why are you not here with us? Is it because of security concerns on the part of two of you? Of course, we take note of uh, what Commissioner Masit has said. Uh, some of the matters are still in court, but for the benefit of the country. Are you safe? Are you? Why are you out of the country? Thank you. Yes, Chair. Maybe first confirm yeah. whether you're out of the country. Yes. I'm outside of the country for security reasons. Okay. Remember, I come from Rift Valley. Uh -huh. Before that, even they said I betrayed the community. In the Facebook, in all social media, I was saying, I've never stepped in my home since that time. I've never even gone beyond the room. That time, I got calls, people telling me to drop the case, what am I doing, so many things, but I believe it's my constitutional right because I know what I did and what I didn't do. So it is because of security reasons. I'm out of the country and we're not doing even well because even the salaries we had, they were stopped. Even, even the one third when I'm doing the case. So we are living at the mercy of people outside. So, uh, Commissioner Herrera should talk on a, on a cell, but mine is a long story. I don't want to say, say so many details because I told you other case in court, but it's because of security reasons. Thank you. Uh, uh, Irene, this is Eugene Wamala. We're in college together. We yes, are, we are actually the same year. You're on university. campus together at the university. Thank you. Uh, yes, you know, Ishunga likes saying the school because we went to our land, but uh, I was at the University of Nairobi. We, we, we're very sorry to on hear a light note, On a light note, at least now we know how you know <laughs> Commissioner Irene. We are. <laughs> no, Irene, we are sorry to hear that uh, you're out of the country. And uh, 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 literally, from what you explain, because the whole country is listening, it's like you're in exile or something. Did you receive specific yeah. threats? What about your family? Yeah. Are they in the Rift Valley? Have, have they also moved out of the country mm -hmm. with you? And is uh, Commissioner Cherera also under the same uh, situation, uh, uh, being uh, away from uh, the country, not by choice, but literally in exile? Is that the situation with Commissioner Cherera as well? And, sorry. Thank you, Chair, for that question. It's a very emotive question. You heard when Commissioner Masit was responding. She so was really, she was really uh, shaken, and uh, it has taken a toll to all of us. I, being the vice chair and the voice behind the mic, and the team being dubbed by my son name, Cherera, Cherera Four. I am in my late forties and I have a young family. My last born is seven years old. It was bad even in school. Our social life was really tortured. It was bad for my children. It was bad for my family. And I said some of things we cannot say them on camera because it is not a safe space for all of us. We've been threatened just because we spoke what we saw and what we know. Personally, I was in charge of communication at BOMA. I used to get information and uh, statements from the commission and I give it out to the media. The screens were there to help the same but came on Friday evening, the screens were stopped. Everyone used to come to me to get information. And you know, part of communication is the transparency bit that is a requirement in any election. I could not give people that information. I asked the chair that we refresh the screens 
so that Kenyans can see how, how many votes we have tallied, how many are remaining. And of course, it was going to be helpful for the country to see the trend and also prepare them to the end. Of course, if it remains like 5,000 votes, people already know how this election has gone. But that was stopped. And it was not something that we had agreed in the commission plenary. I asked about this two times, and the chairman said that he was busy tallying. And this tallying, he was doing it alone with selected few. So all of us, even me as the vice chair, was kept out of this information. And that's why, even today, we will stand by our word that we disown this election presidential result because it was started by a few and it was not verified. I found As we were love. reading the, constitution, the constituency results, there were our queries that were coming on our desk. We needed to get to know how these queries have been resolved to come to the final tally. But all that was not forthcoming. So our voice to disown the result has brought a lot of economic, social, negative impact to ourselves and to our families. When the security was withdrawn, it was withdrawn from our home and our personal security. And at that time, Mandamanos were almost started. And let me be very clear with the committee. It was said even on that fateful Sunday when people gathered in a church somewhere, I can't remember. And the sum after the sermon was just Terera Foshu resign, Terera Foshu resign. And after that, uh, the opposition started saying that they will go to the street because of Cherera 4, they should not resign. As a Kenyan, loving the citizens of this country, that was the day I decided that Kenyans will not go to the streets in my name and blood be shed. Monday morning, I resigned after that Sunday. I did not resign because of myself, I didn't come to the commission to resign. I resigned for the sake of this country. If anyone is to fight for me, God will fight my battles. Let me conclude that since even to date, the commission published the 2022 presidential election. I want to submit that this election be audited. The servers should be opened and a forensic audit should happen. Let us put this thing to rest. After the audit, let us move on. But I will leave it to the committee and the country decide. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chere and Commissioner Masit. And maybe, Commissioner Masit, there is a question, specific question uh, uh, Honorable Eugene asked you. Did you receive any specific threats? And uh, as you answer that, I put a rider to it. Were those specific threats from any specific people? Did you report them to the police? Have you recorded any statements of such threats? To Commissioner Cherera, you have indicated that you resigned but there was an assertion that you had been forced to resign from what you have said it looks like circumstances around the calls for demonstrations and calls for your resignation is what made you resign and you have asserted that you resigned to save the country from bloodshed and people dying in your name my third question to you, Commissioner Cherera, you say you spoke on behalf, uh, and uh, you have rightly put it, the four of you are Christian, the Cherera four, 
maybe Kenyans uh, liked you more than <laughs> liked your face more than because you are more on TV, being in charge of communication, and that's why you are, they were christened the Cherera for. But uh, is she still there? Okay, but you have asserted that you would communicate on behalf of the commission. You have both asserted that you did not see any form 34C. You did not tally. But Commissioner Cherera, I do remember you somewhere around Serena announcing results. What results were you announcing? Where did that tally come from? If you were not involved in any tally, and why did you not adduce that evidence before the Supreme Court? And I, as I said, we are not uh, litigating the Supreme Court again. But why did you not adduce evidence before the Supreme Court that not a single 34 C was seen by yourselves? You did not adduce any single form that differed from the forms that were on the portal. The Supreme Court verified those uh, results that were in the portal. And you did not, why did you not then, did you not trust, because there are things you are saying you cannot tell us, did you not also trust the Supreme Court of this Republic? Thank you, Thank Chair. You. I can come Thank you, Chair. Then, uh, Baby Masid can go first. Yeah, because mine are few. Um, thank you, Chairman. One, I want to say for record that I am strengthened, actually before I resigned. And that one, it's on record in my case in court. And uh, my lawyer is aware. My lawyer is uh, Donald Kikori. And I think if you want to hear more, maybe you can invite him to share more life because that is in court. But I strengthened that time that one I said, but this one, it was urgent I could not I could not uh, do it because uh, I could not expect because people followed me, I ignored for some time. But that night on Saturday going to Sunday morning, people began to run my gate and I had to sneak a check with bike and I was through the back door gate, took a motorbike, went to let me disclose my committee in confidence, went to Namaya because I could not trust the Commissioner people. Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would just beg you answer the question straight up. Did you report to the police? Because that was a more of the direct question. Or you reported to your lawyer, Donald Kip Korir? Are you still online? She has muted the mic. Are you hearing me? I'm on the line. Yeah, we were, we were pleading. Yes. Uh, yes. Instead of narrating the circumstances, the question was rather yes. direct as to whether you reported specific threats to the police, yes, no, I, other than to your lawyer. The police. I reported to the lawyer, the first one, but the second one I didn't have time because those people were closing in on me, and the only thing was to take a motorbike to the airport with my passport. So the straight answer and is that you never to reported to the police. And left the country that night. You never reported to the police. You reported to lawyer Donald Kip Korir. No, no. There were two threats. The first one is to the lawyer. Uh -huh. Because I was still in the country. The second one, when I left the country, it was at night. I took a motorbike to the airport, paid cash, and I was the last one in the manifest, and I left that night. I didn't have even time to report because I was but you, my life that time. So you so did not report. report to the police? Yes, I didn't report that one when I was leaving. Because you, you I, I told my the lawyer, incident, my lawyer, let me get it right, <laughs> Commissioner, the incident happened at night? Yes. You took a motorbike at night? At night? To the airport? I left the country at night. You left the country at night? Meaning yes. you also got the ticket at night and a plane yes. was waiting for you at night around, okay that night around um, yes late night you had a ticket and ready I, was, I think the last one with a ticket ready for an international flight i caught it uh, i had i had to get a connection from kenya to amsterdam because that time i didn't have an invitation to you as where i am i had a 
a ticket for Canada. I had sorry, a visa for Canada, and he was, but for Canada. Commissioner um, Masit, I'm asking another very direct question to you. Canada. Commissioner Masit, I am asking another very direct question to you. Yes. An incident happened at night. You took a border yes. border at night. No, night. The, the incident happened of night of Saturday. Saturday night. Okay. And you. Saturday night. Then I disappeared on Saturday night. The same night. My colleagues closed. Uh -huh. Hello? Uh huh. And stayed there to organize for a ticket on Sunday night. So you left on Sunday night? Next Sunday night, yes. Because uh. I had to get cash. To have it uh, paid, and I had to get um, okay, okay, to okay, do it, okay. Not, not Maybe that, 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 was with the at the that that's good enough. I'm sorry, I'm pushing you. I'm just trying to save time. Yes. Maybe honourable yes. uh, uh, Commissioner Chera can answer the other questions. Finally, finally, before I finish, uh, Chair, allow me just to say thank you to Honourable Uchimu Amalo. It's my year at the University of Nairobi. When I was doing law, I was doing it here, and then I went to do law later. That's the reason why I could not resign, because the, the truth has to come out. Somebody has to stand for my colleagues who at that time also they were facing the same. But I had to, the fact that I come from Rift Valley, nobody wants to see me there. I'm vilified, I'm called a big chair, traitor. They say even uh, the chair is worse than a mother. That's what they call me nowadays. I was removed from all WhatsApp groups, and I'm suffering here. You people, you need to listen to us. We, 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 we sincerely... Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Irene. We sincerely you. sympathize with you. you. And uh, we you. pray for your safety, wherever you are and uh, you. whenever you come back here. But we would encourage you to have all those reports made to the police so that if there are specific threats, they are investigated. Commissioner Charela. I cannot come now until you are ready. <laughs> Commissioner Cherera. Uh, 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 thank you, Kocha. Uh, Kocha, you said that at Serena we had our own results. I wish that committee will play the clip at Serena Hotel. We did not have our own results. What we said is that the results that were going to be announced, we disowned them because of the manner of opaqueness that <laughs> that last fit was handled. Uh, yeah. That's what we said. We did say that we had our own results. That's why we are saying now yeah. that results need to be audited. And this is not of our own. It is even in law that any elections need to be verifiable and can be audited at any other particular time. So it is not something that will begin now. It is there in the election act. We emphasize that it should be audited and the servers to be opened. Chair, uh, Chair my name is Catherine and my sister Cherera. In your own words, you said the results were handwritten and the results even exited 100%. And how come you never mentioned this to the Supreme Court? You're mentioning it to us here. And those you brought as even the substantiators of the same never brought it and never, you know, substantiated anything. In your own words, surely. Um, uh, honorable committee, I commissioner, also invite you commissioner. to my affidavit to the Supreme Court. Whatever we are saying now, it is in our affidavit that we filed at the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, it's like nothing or not everything was read through. We explained everything that we said. And after the Supreme Court gave its ruling, we say we abide by that because it is the apex court of our country and as law abiding citizens we said yes we accept it and from that day henceforth the Cherera folk have never spoken until today let me submit to this honorable committee that everything we have said it is in our affidavit 
Okay, yeah. the commissioner, I yeah. will request that you allow us, you just stay online, hear a few more questions, then you can note them and answer them together. Uh, Honorable Sess, Governor Sess. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Let me appreciate uh, the two commissioners, Masit and Cherera, who have uh, seen it fit to participate in this uh, sitting, and we appreciate uh, that they are there. I have a few questions, and not necessarily to Cherera or Masit. I think even the commissioners physically present here may, may want to answer. Number one, the law was that has been that the final announcement of the presidential vote is actually what is announced at the polling station. And that is what is called the Form 34A. And we have 46,229 polling stations that I need not mention. But I'm just wondering, when uh, Commissioner uh, Wanderi? Wanderi says that they were not telling as commissioners, did you actually think that the seven commissioners had the capacity to physically tally the 46,229 forms and be able to give the results within seven days as the law states. Number two, the matter went before the Supreme Court as a petition. Would you say that the results declared by the chairman were inconsistent with, in any way with those that were declared at the polling stations? And that brings me to the final statement by Cherera where she says she wants the server to be opened. And that has been the language, open the server. The secretariat was here, the IEBC secretariat was here. And I remember I personally asked the question of the server because I thought we need to understand what's in the server. And the ICT director said, whatever is in the server is exactly what is in the public portal. That any form 34A is what they have stored in the server. There's no difference. So what is it you want the server to produce if there was no inconsistency? Or maybe you know of an inconsistency that you should have taken before the Supreme Court. So can, was there any inconsistency? I think that's the bottom line. Can I also, also uh, I wanted to also, uh, this is uh, Hassan Omar. Uh, and I, as, as uh, like Cecily, because I probably would want you also to benefit from some of the questions we would pose to uh, your two colleagues here. You know, I had uh, a lot of reference to the minor KI case. But the true import of the decision of the minor KI case is that what is declared at the polling station is the actual result of that election. This tallying you're talking about is simply arithmetic. In fact, today, I look, at God, I, I, I look up to God and say, the systems were so foolproof that our elections cannot be decided by four or seven people. The whole world was monitoring. And in fact, this idea of the server is, is, is almost an idea to try and camouflage the fact that there was a result which was verified at, and those forms that were tallied not a single one of you came up with a challenge to meet up, as suggested by, by Justice uh, Smoking Wanjala, to show one single form signed by your, by your returning officers or been, um, agents or anybody that differs with those that have been uh, in, put onto that server. So I think, uh, or into that portal. So I think you sh you, we should now, even in terms of moving forward, because it's a, it's a, what I've heard, I've heard Eugene you repeatedly here saying how people say that the, the outcome of these uh, elections was not free and fair. And I can tell you, outside this group and the four of you, I don't know of anybody else who says that the outcome of these elections was not free and fair. Number two, number two, I also was a commissioner at a very stormy point of this country's uh, political transition, I think, which birthed the new constitution and some of the state institutions you see. 
I investigated instances of violence and laid a lot of responsibility on people who ended up becoming presidents of this country, probably the fourth and fifth. I can tell you when you do your job consciously, there's nothing to fear. People will send you messages. That's why Ongwai uh, Nyangai is still here and others. I can guarantee you what Kenyan simply wanted was the truth of what happened. The truth in many instances has been canvassed in the Supreme Court. It has been canvassed across board. And I, th I can tell you without a doubt, at least if it is any threat, it cannot be from our side. Our side is totally comfortable with the fact that the truth was canvassed and mitigated and agreed upon and settled. Lastly, there are a lot of other things that we do not want to go into. There is evidence that was adduced about your meetings, the four of you, with Tuju in apartments in, uh, in, uh, in Upper Hill, paid for. paid for by Ngonga, who was my college mate. People, who, you, the National Security Council membership coming here. Senator Wak was clarified why he was here in his personal capacity and the unfortunate circumstances that met him here. The person who was, came here on behalf of the Security Council is today's CDF. Trust me, the evidence, if we were to pursue the attempt to sabotage this election, would have been overwhelming. That's why we are saying sometimes, let it rest. There's, uh, let it rest. I can tell you without a doubt, these matters have been canvassed and settled. I can tell you without a doubt, the truth is in public play. I can tell you without a doubt, some of these lies are no longer holding. They are just a, a, a few of you who continue to believe in that narrative and they'll continue to perpetuate it. But every submission that has come here has actually given credibility to the elections. Honorable uh, Eugene? Yes, I just uh, wanted to uh, mention something that uh, the, I think it was Cherera or Commissioner Masik mentioned that when the security team came, uh, at, at that point there were no results yet because there, there had been an attempt to taint the name of a very distinguished uh, professional career soldier, uh, General Francis Ogola. I think my colleague uh, Omar has referred to that. Uh, thank God, uh, due to the Tonje rules, he is now the CDF. Uh, I am happy that uh, uh, you have mentioned that uh, when that team came, they did not come to threaten anyone or to change the results or to overturn. I think for the record it is important because that was something that went to 